speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus sometimes comes across in a rather strange way, and I find that to be the case even with today's gospel. It almost seems like he's slightly harsh and not terribly coming forward very quickly to heal, to help those around him. It's as if he's holding back on some level, particularly with the woman who comes up to him and touches his garb. Sometimes I find in the life of faith that when we need God most, God seems to recoil, to hide, or at least that's what we think. And I think today in the Gospel, Mark is actually trying to play off of this theme a bit in his account of these two events. Jesus knows that both persons, the woman and the young child, need to be healed. But he seems to take his time. He doesn't rush. He doesn't race to care. And in the case of the young child, it seems that the child has died. He goes through a crowd, and he seems to accuse a woman for touching his garb, that his power flows out from within him. I don't know about you, but I think I would have been a little bit nervous at that point. But in each instance, he waits for the person's to come forward, particularly in the story of the woman. He waits for her, even though he probably knew well who touched him, he waits for her to make the move. And when she does, he says, your faith is great. Your faith is strong. Now, a little clarification here. I think sometimes in the Christian life we believe that to have faith means to have certainty, to be ever so confident and certain of what God is doing. But that's not actually the understanding within the Jewish Christian tradition, particularly in the scriptures. Faith doesn't mean we exactly know what God is doing all the time. But faith is the persistence that we continue to go back to God and say, Lord, help me, guide me. I don't understand. Take Job. Some of, how many of you know about Job? Okay. If you ever get a chance, read the story of Job in the Old Testament. Job is this man of incredible faith, incredible love for God, but he finds himself ultimately in a trash heap. All his friends have rejected him. He's lost everything. He's lost his family. He's lost his home. He's lost his farm. Everything is gone. Yet Job remains steadfast and faithful to God. But Job does question. In fact, in the end of his story, he gets quite angry with God and says, Why? Why? And God's response, I always find not terribly helpful, God says, well, who are you to ask? Where were you when I created the world? I don't know about Job, but I think at that moment I said, okay, I give up. <laughs> I don't get this. But I think what's going on in these stories, and, and we rarely talk about spirituality as a church. We rarely do, and I think it's an unfortunate thing. But what's going on in these stories is that God, to use an analogy that might be fitting for us in our day, God is like a parent. And that God, in some sense, allows you and I to come to God on our own will and volition. God never imposes God's self upon us. God will call. God will beckon. But God will never, ever infringe on our freedom. 
And God doesn't necessarily impose on our freedom either by simply trying to solve all of our problems. Because if God solved all of our problems, we don't get the chance to participate in grace. And this is a key distinction here. We often think of grace as God coming to our rescue, you know, that great hymn, Amazing Grace. <laughs> that God comes to our rescue and sort of jumps down and lifts us up and saves us. But that's not actually what grace is. What grace is, is God working with us. God wanting us to come to God and say, Lord, I need your help. Or, Lord, be with me in this time. And sometimes God almost, in my life, I find sometimes God almost is, you know when babies, you know when they're starting to learn how to walk, mothers who would know this better than I, but it's always fascinating. If you see a parent trying to teach their child to walk, the parent will set the child in one spot, and the child will start to cry, and the parent will step back. And it always looks like torture to me. You know, for this poor child. He says, this poor child is trying to figure out how to get to the parent. But eventually the child does learn how to begin to walk towards that parent. In some sense, and God can correct me in paradise, <laughs> in some sense, because I'm not an expert on this, some sense, I think that's what God does with us. And we see this with that woman in the beginning. He could have certainly turned to her and said, how dare you touch my cloak? What do you think you're doing, taking on my power from me? But he doesn't. And I think quite intentionally. Because he wants her to reach out to him. Much like a child or a baby reaching out to the parent. And then there's this dialogue. There's no immediate resolution. It just simply says, your faith, your willingness to step forward and come to me, this is what he'll do. Now I'm going to use a little fancy tech technical term here. Thomas Aquinas, who was one of the great theologians of the Christian church, we call this us cooperating with grace. That we are invited not only to accept the grace of God, but to cooperate, to be willing to say, I'm going to go the extra mile for you. <laughs> I'm going to relate this more personally. In the days and weeks immediately following the fire, I kept following myself asking God, what in the world do you mean by this? There were many nights where I would just lay and cry and question what God was doing. But the thing I chose, and I don't know why, but the thing I chose was I'm going to keep going back to God day after day after day in prayer. And I will let God know I'm mad, angry, hurt, sad. But I still keep going back to God because I sense that this is a profound moment of grace. That this is a moment where the hand of God, as I tell people, the hand of God is actually active here and now in this moment. You and I actually stand on some very holy ground. It may not seem like it. It may seem a little messy. We're all running around trying to get things ready in the beginning. But this is holy ground. This is grace at work. The cross was not a beautiful scene. Nor what we're going through now. And like at the cross, there's pain and fear, doubt and wonder. But grace is active, and, and the God of grace, the God of life, is reaching out to you and I, saying, Come. Come to me. Christian faith isn't about knowledge, necessarily. 
not in the way that you and I think of it. Rather, Christian faith is about that persistence in going back again and again to the God of life and saying, Speak. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. I come before you. I love you. I desire to be with you. Show me the way. And it won't happen immediately. It may be several days, weeks, even years. But what I found in my life, the more and more I go back to this God, the more and more I begin to feel grace working within me. It takes persistence. It takes a commitment, a willingness, to set ourselves every day before the Holy One of God. My invitation to you today is to be like that woman and be persistent. Keep going to the side of God and pulling on God's garment. Be there. Don't give up. Take time every day. Find a place where you can pray and meditate. You don't have to have lots of words. This one guy asked me the other day, he said, well, I don't know how to pray. You don't have to. All you need to do is set yourself before this God and say, I love you. And to share how you're feeling, what you're thinking, but then to sit in utter silence, whether outdoors, in a place, at, in your home where you feel comfortable and most at peace. And just place yourself into the holy presence of God and be persistent like the woman and say, Lord, work your grace in me. The miracle isn't the thing that happens immediately. The miracle is the thing that over life we get drawn in more or more deeply into love with God and God's holy people. And so I'll add a second thing here. If you want to know grace, make a commitment to the Eucharist. What we do here it's the fellowship of the saints. Us, again, coming back to God, getting up on our feet like that child and walking forward and saying, feed me, nourish me, heal me. And if you do that, you will find, and I can commit myself to this, you will find grace working within you. And what was once tragedy will become the place of life. Maybe not immediately, but in time. Be persistent like that woman. Amen.